If you're like me, you suffer from a disease known as decision inability. Symptoms of this disease include being a grown-ass adult and not being able to complete the simple task of picking a show to watch, rather than being like, oh, all right, this looks interesting. Let's go ahead and give it a watch. I instead usually go, oh, this looks interesting. Okay, what else is there? I'll sometimes search for so long that by the time I'm ready to watch, the allotted time I set aside to watch is already over. What are you doing? Nothing. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. This mainly used to happen when searching for a movie to watch on Netflix, but it has slowly seeped into watching anime too. There's thousands and thousands of shows out there to watch. How do I decide just one? Well, you don't. You instead let something decide for you because again, you're an adult and any opportunity to deflect even the smallest responsibility is welcomed. And what better way for me to choose a show than at random? I've had this idea for a while, but also happened to notice that the YouTuber Lex Torius has also done this, so shout out to him. This series is going to be a bit different though. While his randomizer goes through all of the anime entries on Mel, I will instead be sorting through the 500 best rated shows because frankly, I don't wanna watch something that fucking sucks. What the fuck is this piece of shit? And because it already takes me about four months to get out a video, we'll only be reviewing one anime each time. If you enjoy this series and want to see more of it, please let me know in the comments. I'm still gonna do it even if everyone hates it, but it would at least make me feel good. Well, now that the explanation is out of the way, there's only one thing left for me to do. All right, we are here on what is the most official random number generator, the uh, default one on Google.com. As you can see, it shows a min of one, max of 10. We changed that to 500 because we don't want to get too wild and crazy. I don't want to watch the 28,452nd ranked show because that one's probably not that good. Instead, I like to enjoy the things I watch. I don't think that's a crime. So we go ahead, roll this, and I'm going to go to the top TV series on my anime list. And then hopefully it is a show that I have not seen or a show that is not like the seventh season of something because obviously I can't watch that because I'll have no context of what is going on with the rest of the show. Hopefully we can do that. I excluded movies from this just because there's a lot of movies tied to shows themselves. So it might get a little weird with trying to find one there, but we're just going to go ahead, generate and see what we can get. 346. All right, we are here, which should be 301 to 350. We're still in the eights, although it's kind of on the lower end. You already see at least a lot of recognizable shows, at least I do, which is like Hyoka. Uh, you see Ancient Magus Bride, World Trigger, Angel Beats, Dora Hidoro. I mean, those are all pretty recognizable stuff. But if we go all the way down here towards 346, it's going to be none other than Food Wars, which I have seen. Shit. All right, of course, we just need to get another number. And it is 310. That's not that not that different. Okay, 310 ends up being Angel Beats. Okay, all I know is that this one's pretty popular. It's a classic. This is the 28th most popular show. Ha. Huh. All right, I honestly don't know much about it, except I think there's some music in it, and there's a girl with a gun, so... Let's fucking go. Okay, so yeah, believe it or not, I have not actually seen Angel Beats, despite it being the 28th most popular anime on all of Mal. You take me to him! Take me to the son of a bitch! All I really knew about the show that it was popular and had a pretty banging opening song. The synopsis of the show reads, Death is one of the, actually, you know what, I much prefer the Crunchyroll version. Otonashi is a young boy living in the afterlife with no memories of his life before his death. He joins a school organization called the SSS whose mission is to fight against God. Get ready to receive some Holy Spirit. Well, let's go. Well, that certainly was something. My experience watching Angel Beats can be directly described as the Pedro Pascal meme of him laughing and then crying. I was actually pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed this anime. It's got its flaws, yes, but it hasn't aged nearly as bad as I thought it would having being 13 years old. 
The general premise of the show is our main character, Otanashi, has died, but he's not in the afterlife. Instead, it's kind of this weird sort of middle limbo in between it and the real world. The dimension is set just like a normal high school, because of course it is. No one knows the true reason at first for being there, but they all feel the need to oppose their student council president that they consider the god of this world. But actually, the purpose isn't to oppose God, but this dimension is filled with teens who had unfair lives and weren't able to experience the joys of youth. This world will give them a second chance to do the things they never got to do before they can actually pass on. Angel Beats is like a Swiss army knife for anime fans. I think it's got at least something at least most people could appreciate. Slice of life, comedy, romance, drama, plenty of happy moments, and plenty of the feels are real. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. When I was watching, I couldn't help but draw comparisons to Clanet, a slice of life that's relatively tame until it decides to fuck you with sadness episode after episode. Turns out, that's not really that big brain of a comparison because Jun Maeda, the creator of Angel Beats, was also the creator of Clanet, as well as other series like Charlotte and Little Busters. While he has a lot of experience in creating visual novels, Angel Beats was the first original anime work he created. And although there's plenty of goaded anime originals, there's also plenty that are pure dog water, so I respect being able to make the show interesting. I ultimately believe what made Angel Beats such a popular anime is the characters. Right from the jump you're introduced to like 10 different people and I immediately thought, yeah, I'm not gonna remember any of them. But as the show goes on, we start to learn more about each character and their past and they are all extremely fucking tragic. I'm sure you can make the argument that that's just sympathy baiting, but damn it, it worked. Even if the characters had a bad past, if they're a piece of shit now, I wouldn't care. But Angel Beats has to be one of the rare shows where every character in the show is likable. All of them are honestly pretty stupid, but even if they get angry or show ill intent, it doesn't last for very long. This makes it much easier to root for each character and feel more connected when they're finally able to accomplish what they wanted to do in life. And at the dippity top of that likable scale is the show's main character, Otanashi. <laughs> He is the personification of just a good dude, always visiting his sister and caring for her, and once she's passed on, he wants to become a doctor to help people. And he does that until the very end. And once he gets banished to the Shadow Realm, he still continues his caring ways and becomes the facilitator to help the students accomplish what they always wanted to do. As I mentioned before, anything sad that happens in the show is going to hit much harder because you've grown attached to these characters. And the thing I liked about how the feels were handled in Angel Beats is that it was a mix of happy sadness and sad sadness. It's almost like a relieving feeling to watch the students disappear because that means they were able to accomplish what they wanted. But it's sad because the group has become so close and there's a real chance they'll never meet each other in the next life. On a slightly less depressing note, the comedy in the show might have been what surprised me the most. I'm usually not a big fan of comedy in anime. A lot of the times the jokes don't hit, or there's simply just too much comedy that it detracts from the show itself. And comedy as a whole doesn't always age the best, so color me surprised when not only was the comedy in Angel Beats not complete shit, but also had some of the better bits I've seen in all of anime. A large contributing factor to this has to be that the people in this dimension cannot die, so what better way for comic relief than to murder people in funny ways? There's plenty of goofy moments, but my favorites have to be the rockets under the desks and when the group fights the angel clones. Sensei, Basically here, they're trying to make Angel's grades really bad by swapping out her test, and everyone fails at distracting the class. So when that fails, you might as well just rig some rockets under their desk. The initial hit into the ceiling is funny, but it's the fact that they included a day of instant replay. That's just top tier. It's like I'm watching the Sports Center top 10. <laughs> Ah, 
This one is funny because it's actually one of the more serious scenes, but it just ends up being one person after another comically impaling themselves so the group can move forward. All this stuff considered, I still have a few issues with Angel Beats. Not straying too far from the last topic, while the funny moments themselves are good, I still felt that the timing wasn't always the best, as I mentioned with the Angel clone scene. Like, I loved that scene, but at the same time, I don't think it was necessary, and there's a few other moments throughout the anime that feel the same. Like, how do you go from an extremely emotional performance from Iwasawa to just playing a fucking baseball tournament? It's slightly jarring, but not enough to make me stop watching. Also, the show becomes quite predictable. It's definitely a bit self-aware later on with things like Kanade not being an actual angel, but as soon as Iwasawa disappears in like episode 3, it's pretty easy to tell what the actual plot of the show was. Personally, I would have liked a bit more mystery behind it, but maybe I'm being a little harsh. The other main thing was I was really hoping that Naoi was actually a bad person. It would have just been more sadness, but if after he explained his whole backstory and Otonashi acknowledges him, he just goes and offs Yuri anyways, that would have been pretty wild to witness. I'll admit, makes sense why it didn't happen because at the end of the day his life is shitty like the rest of them, but he goes from being a potential solid villain to kind of just a massive simp. I think things like this could have been solved if the show was a bit longer and then we could have dove deeper into learning the backstory of more characters and get dedicated time with them before they pass on. Cause like, you're just telling me I'm supposed to sit here without knowing anything about TK? No, I will not allow it. I'll be back. But overall, Angel Beats is a very touching show that gives people a second chance to enjoy the life they never got to have. It has aspects of all genres, and it is enjoyable even 13 years later, making it very deserving of its score on Mal, as I would also give it an 8 out of 10. If you've seen Angel Beats, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'd like to make this a reoccurring series on the channel, there's just so many shows out there to watch, and this kind of forces me to watch some that I may have not considered before. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons, including Killer Bunny, Leon, Little PK, Peppy Jewel, Nicholas Gutierrez, Tech Rob, Shaky Pants, and Chupa. If you also want to join my Patreon, the link for it will be in the description. That's all I got for this one. Hope to see you here again.